So to start off, if you can give us a bit of an introduction to your career journey and how it led you to the position you're in now. Okay, well, I'm Alison Grieve and I'm currently a founder and one of the directors at Management Dynamics. Uh, when I think about my career journey to, to now, um, one of the people I really admired was Steve Jobs. And one of the things he said was, you can only join the dots looking backwards. And so when I look at where I am now, and I look back across the, the path that I've taken to get here, it does all make sense. Although some of it probably didn't look like it was going to make sense at all. Um, but I can tell you that from a very early age as a little girl, I loved uh, reading and traveling. And so I always knew, and for some reason I wanted to run my own business. So, you know, when you play in the garden, um, at being mummies and daddies or whatever, I would run my own business. So this is, you know, some little girl in the garden. I, for some reason that's, I, and I have no idea where that came from. Um, and it was usually some big oil company that I seem to, maybe that's just the thing. And um, I also uh, knew I wanted to work internationally. And so going to university and when I was looking for jobs, that international work was a key criteria for anywhere that I was going to work. Um, and so that was there right from a very early age. Um, I really enjoyed, you know, looking at how I approach work and our business and working with our clients. We take a very systemic approach. And now I can sort of relate it back to how I studied economics at university. And I really enjoyed it. I didn't think it was a sort of the extra subject that I'd taken on initially because I was studying languages, because I was going to travel. And um, so then I took economics and switched. And that's what my degree ended up being. But it was the 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 systemic view that economics takes of looking at complex systems, whether it's an economy or, um, you know, microeconomics, whichever aspect, it's looking at all of the different levers that you can pull and how that has an impact on the rest of the system. And so now I look at what we do and we, we're looking at systems all the time within organizations and within people and what impacts how we are. So it's kind of like, ooh, that started way back then too. Um, and I think the other thing is all about, you know, how important purpose and having your own purpose um, and understanding how that integrates with the work that you're doing. And, and that was something that was very true for me when I joined Mars. And, I, and one of the reasons I wanted to join them as a company was because, you know, they lived their purpose. It wasn't just on the walls. Um, and they live the values. And I think those values are in my blood and they're part of what we do at Management Dynamics. You know, it's all about, you know, integrity and how we treat our customers and our suppliers and each other and, you know, having high levels of quality in the work. So those are very fundamental. And I think um, that I can see coming through. Um, and I learned from really good managers as well at Mars. So that has also been something that I think has shaped my thinking and where I've got now so yeah funny way of looking at my career to date but it's kind of grown and made sense you know yeah no I think that's really nice because I think it's so easy in your 20s to feel like a bit lost you're not really sure what you're doing you're hopping around trying different things and it can feel like a bit of a mishap and like things aren't making sense so it's really nice to know that actually when you look back it will all make sense with what you've learned and why you've done that journey. Um, so no, that, that's very reassuring to hear. Um, yeah, no, that's really good. Because, you know, also I worked in different functions. So I started in IT and then moved from there into finance for a bit and then HR. And so, you know, I, I think you can never know. And I was so lucky with Mars being a very open organization to moving people around. And for me, you know, I would just say, um, you know, people should have a go and other things will open up and don't worry if it doesn't make sense. One day you'll look back and you'll go, oh, who would have thought that's that red link that's all the way through? Yeah. So kind of throughout Mars and into, I guess, management dynamics and on that journey, have you felt like you faced any kind of challenges or disadvantages being a woman? Um. Yeah, I mean, 
yes and no. I think um, part of it is my um, my own mental philosophy was being a woman shouldn't hold me back. Um, and that, you know, I am not, you know, many of um, many of the women that I'm interested in and, and I'm inspired by would not let, you know, ceilings get in their way of doing what was important to them. And I think, you know, so that I think was part of it. However, it, it would be silly to say that there would never been challenges as a result of women. In fact, you know, in many of the scenarios that I've worked in, um, both within Mars and outside of Mars, you know, since I left, particularly since I left Mars and I've been working with a wide range of organizations in different countries, I've been the only woman um, in a room with multiple leaders. And, um, you know, I'm the one that's developing them or advising them or facilitating them. And sometimes it can be a bit daunting. You know, you go in and you think, oh, you know, who are these people? Um, but then, you know, I think you just have to ground yourself and say, I'm here for a reason and I'm going to do my job. And that's it. That's I, I have earned the place to be here. And so I'm not a token um, so I've never felt like the token woman. There's been a few uncomfortable moments, I would say, which, you know, nowadays people might call sexual harassment or just, you know, groups of people going to places that I don't want to go because that's just not how I am. Um, and I think, you know, there's probably men who were uncomfortable in those situations too. So I, I think, you know, nowadays there's a lot more talk about you know actually this isn't appropriate in certain settings and so people shouldn't behave in particular ways which is good because I think you know there were times when I did feel uncomfortable but did I ever feel really at threat I've not had experiences like some women who've been you know in the me too thing never had any of that kind of thing or anything that I couldn't have pushed away and diffused very early on so it didn't happen I think sometimes um almost like demanding that respect really helps because if you are sadly if you come across a bit more maybe gentle or quiet they'll latch on to that and if you feel like very aware that you're the only woman in the room and that they might feel a certain way they will latch on to that and I think then for maybe treat a certain way so I think sometimes it's going in and kind of demanding and you know you know you've been hired for a reason because you're amazing at your job and that's why you're there and they've got to learn from you and kind of demanding that I think is always kind of really important um yeah. not being afraid to push back and, mm. and say you know it's okay if you don't want this that's fine um and usually they turn around <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think asserting yourself not in a bossy directive way that's definitely not my style at all but um just being sure of yourself um and feeling grounded about you know why you're there and, and what's your purpose yeah um, and being prepared so I think you know that's something that's really important mm. you've talked quite a bit about um the managers that you've had and the impact they've had on you who would you say has been kind of your biggest female inspiration oh well I have thought long and hard about this question and there's not one I mean I can't say the biggest I mean or if I was it's probably my mother but um you know she she inspired me to to think that I should have a career I deserved a career and that it was important to be independent and as a girl you could do anything you wanted so that was very much something that I got from her but I also got that from my father too so I'd say it's not you know and maybe I could actually say that he might have even been more inspirational in that term than her but women um, who inspired me um well there's the the early ones like Amelia Eckhart, um, Vera Britton, I, you know, the Emmeline Pankhurst, I, you know, those women were so inspirational. They went against the odds, the grain, they were tough and sassy. And there's something about that that I, I really um, like. Um, but at work, you know, the managers who really, you know, I could name some like Debbie Bones, she was amazing manager. 
Um, Judy Zagorski was another one who, you know, just inspired me to um, have a go, um, but be thoughtful about it and build good relationships. Um, I also am inspired by Lisa Leahy. Um, I was on a course with her and she was awesome and I love the stuff she's written um, and Michelle Obama. So I think there's a wide range of women out there who are really inspirational. Um, I work with a lovely lady called Mandy Barter who founded a charity from nothing and I find her inspirational. So I think there's lots of women who at all kinds of levels in different ways um, inspire me. And, you know, if I think about what's the characteristics of those women, I think it's their perseverance. Um, they have something that they want to do. They don't let go of it. Um, and they push through whatever it is to get it. And they bring people along with them. But they do it in a way that is ethical, full of integrity, positive intent and really live values that I aspire to. And um, that's, yeah, that's the women that I like. How can women best support other women in business and leadership? Um, I've, I've met a couple of really scary women and uh, thought, ooh, um, I'm not sure, who have all, almost uh, become like men uh, to fulfill their leadership roles. Um, and so but looking back at it I think well that's because the environment and the culture they were in that's the only way um, they could survive in it but I think how does that then support other women um, in developing and growing because I do believe fundamentally you know women should be helping other women um, and um, so for me I think it's about modeling um, and showing what women can do and encouraging other women as well. So, you know, we know from research that women are more likely to uh, think they're not capable um, and therefore not have a go. Um, so they won't even apply for the job because they haven't ticked all the boxes. Um, so there's lovely research about that. So I think, you know, encouraging women to have a go, take a deep breath and say, yeah, you haven't ticked all the boxes, but if you don't have a go, you'll never know. So I think there's something there that um, we can do uh, to really support women much more effectively. I always remember at school being told when um, learning a bit about more about like cover letters and applications, that women are far more likely, if they even just see one, one box, in the kind of job application that they can't do or they don't have experience in, they just won't apply. But men kind of will scan through and, you know, even if they can't do the majority of it, will still just apply and go for it. Um, so I think that's always one thing I'm quite glad I learned, you know, when I was younger to kind of just go for it, carry on applying, don't like, don't let that hold you back, um, which I think is always really important. And also, um, I think being in a leadership role and constantly reviewing who's at the table and who's missing, um, I think is always, when I see a lot of kind of inspirational women talk, that's always something that they're like, never stop reflecting when you're in that position, who else is at the table? Um, so how do you feel that kind of from the start of your journey to now, um, leadership in that role has changed? Um, well, I think when I started, uh, leadership was uh, seen as a much more hierarchical thing. Um, it was much more of a, you know, a power, a leader with a team who did much more directive. Um, and I think over the last decades that I've been working, we have seen a shift um, in leadership and what's required. And I think there's been various drivers for that, um, not least you know, the whole remote working piece. But I think the level of complexity that people are having to manage, lead, um, teams are having to work on, individuals are having to work on, means that, you know, we need a lot more collaboration and across lots of teams, which means that the leader becomes much more fluid. It's much more related to 
a project or a task force rather than just a department who only work for them. So I think silos are having to be broken down. So that changes some of the dimensions of what's needed in leadership. And I also think the human interactions are changing too. You know, we used to sit at desks and then suddenly hot desk game became topical and then remote working, partly COVID, but it was already on the cards. Lots of people were traveling, um, you know, and having conference calls and so on. So I think all of that virtual working has shifted it too, which means, you know, what is the role of the leader? And I think it's a much more adaptive, collaborative thing that a leader needs to do. You know, they need to be able to uh, adjust and shift, but also challenge the the group that they're working with as a member of the group rather than as the director, because they don't know the answer any more than anybody else um, to come up with solutions together. And so I think they're much more like the conductor in an orchestra where you have lots of people who come and go and it's quite fluid depending on the piece that you're playing. And indeed different leaders will walk in and conduct the orchestra at different times. And you need to know what you're trying to achieve and have the respect of the group, but actually you don't make any noise yourself as the orchestra's conductor. It's the orchestra that does it. And so I think we need to move to that in our mental thinking. Um, mm. I think, I mean, with the remote working, I think it's the one amazing, well, many amazing things, but one of the added amazing things is that it, make, it makes it more accessible to different people for the role, which is fantastic. But I also think, that adaptiveness that you were saying for leaders, I think that's the one thing that I think women can be so skillful in because they've always had to be so adaptive doing that, the mother role, the, the friend role, the, the daughter role, then the, the high power role, and, you know, things like that. I think it comes so naturally to so many women that I think that's something that, you know, that's really celebrated and that they excel in. Yeah, I think, I think women are taught that from a very young age about adapting to different situations. Um, and so it's an era that will really play to our strengths. So finally, what advice would you give to other women who aspire to become leaders? Oh, have a go. Um, I'd say just jump in and have a go. It's really fun. You'll learn so much. Um, it's definitely not a job where you're ever done. So that's what I would say for those who say I haven't ticked the box yet. It's like you never will. So don't worry about that. Uh, the box is always changing. Um, so have a go. It's really good fun. And if you are at all interested in having an impact or making a difference or retrieving great results, become a leader um, and see what you can do through others. It's a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm.